All right, ready to dive into something pretty mind-boggling. Always. Okay, well, today we're talking about the largest living organism on Earth. Hmm. What do you think it is? Largest living organism, I don't know, a blue whale? That's a good guess. Some kind of giant fungus, maybe? That's another good one. Or, I don't know, something completely out there. All good guesses, but the answer might surprise you. Okay, I'm intrigued. It's actually a forest. A whole forest? Yep, a clonal colony of quaking aspen trees known as Pando. Pando? Located in Utah. Okay, so a whole forest as one organism. Exactly. How does that even work? Well, Pando is essentially one giant entity because all the trees, or rather stems, as they're more accurately called, are genetically identical. Ah. Uh, and yeah. they all share a single massive root system. So it's like if you were to plant a cutting from a plant, right. the new plant would essentially be a clone sharing the same DNA. Exactly. But imagine that happening over and over again, but all interconnected underground. That's Pando, thousands of trees springing from one root system, spreading out over acres and acres. Wow, if I were to walk through Pando, would I even realize I'm looking at one organism? Probably not. Hmm. You'd see what appears to be a normal forest, thousands of shimmering, quaking aspen trees with leaves rustling in the wind. Sound beautiful. It is a truly breathtaking sight. Yeah. But beneath the surface lies this incredible interconnectedness, a network of roots binding them all together. Wow, it's amazing to think that something so massive and seemingly complex could arise from a single origin. It is. And speaking of massive, how big are we actually talking? Pando covers a staggering 106 acres. Wow. Which is roughly the size of 80 football fields. 80 football fields. Yeah, and its estimated weight is over 6,600 tons. That's heavier than a dozen Statues of Liberty combined. Yeah, it puts those blue whales to shame a little bit. Definitely. But what about its age? It has to be ancient, right? Oh, absolutely. That's where things get even more fascinating. Okay. Scientists are still debating Pando's exact age. I see. But estimates range from at least 9,000 years. 9,000 years. To potentially 80,000 years old. 80,000 years. Yeah, it's really old. That means that Pando could have been around since the last Ice Age. It could have. Witnessing woolly mammoths. Yeah. And all sorts of incredible creatures. It's incredible to think about. I mean, it makes you realize that Pando has already lived through dramatic climate shifts. It has. And yet human-induced change is now posing such a significant threat. It is. It's a pretty sobering thought. Absolutely. It really puts the scale and speed of current climate change into perspective. Yeah. And it highlights the urgency of understanding and protecting ecosystems like Pando. I agree. But before we get into the threats that Pando faces, yeah. maybe we should talk a little bit about how this incredible organism even came to be. Yes, please. I'm curious about its origin story. Okay. Well, just imagine this. Okay. Shortly after the last ice age, okay. a single aspen seed finds itself in the perfect spot. Wow. This seed lands in the Fish Lake Basin of Utah. Fish Lake Basin? Yeah, it's a geologically unique area shaped by volcanic boulders, glacial till, and even an active fault line. Wow. So all these conditions provided the ideal environment for Pando's root system to really thrive. So the right seed in the right place at the right time? Exactly. So then what happened? Well, over millennia, the single seed spread through a process called suckering. Suckering? Yeah, where new stems grow up from the existing root system. Okay. It's a form of asexual reproduction. Hmm. So each new stem is genetically identical to the original. So it's like a natural cloning process happening underground for thousands of years. Exactly. And that's how it came to dominate such a large area. That's right. And this process has allowed Pando to adapt and regenerate in the face of changing conditions. At least until recently. Yeah, at least until relatively recently. It's fascinating to think that while Pando is one organism right. with a potentially ancient root system, mm -hmm. The individual stems we see above ground have much shorter lifespans, typically living for about 100 to 130 years. Yeah. So it's a constant cycle of life and death, mm -hmm. all within this single massive entity yeah. that makes the overgrazing issue even more concerning. Yeah. It's not just about the loss of individual trees, right. but the disruption of this entire cycle of regeneration. Exactly. If new stems aren't allowed to grow and mature, Pando's future is at risk. Oh, no. And that's not the only threat that this ancient giant is facing. You're right. It's not. What else is happening? Well, overgrazing by deer and cattle is a major issue as they right. munch on those young aspen shoots. Yeah. Preventing new growth. But it doesn't stop there, right? It doesn't. What else? Climate change is also adding another layer of stress. <sighs> 
rising temperatures and shifts in precipitation patterns could make Pando more susceptible to diseases and pests. Oh, wow. wow. Making its survival even more precarious. That's like a double whammy. It is. It makes you wonder if something as ancient and seemingly invincible as Pando is facing such serious threats. What does that mean for other less resilient parts of our natural world? It's a stark reminder of the interconnectedness of ecosystems. Yeah. And the impact of human actions on a global scale. Definitely. But amidst these challenges, there's also a glimmer of hope. Okay. Scientists and conservationists are working hard to protect this ancient wonder. That's good to hear. Recognizing its value, not just for its size and age, right. but for what it can teach us about resilience, adaptation, and the interconnectedness of life. It makes those conservation efforts all the more crucial. They are. So can we delve into those a bit more? Sure. What exactly are people doing to protect Pando? Well, protecting a single organism that covers over 100 acres presents some unique challenges. I can imagine it's like trying to give a checkup to a giant, figuring out where to even start. Exactly. Yeah. It is, yeah. So one of the more straightforward strategies has been fencing off sections of Pando. Fencing. Yeah. So like creating safe havens for the trees. Exactly. Protecting young aspen shoots from those hungry deer and cattle we discussed. Okay. Giving them a fighting chance yeah. to grow. So it's like establishing nurseries for the next generation of Pando. You can say that, yeah. And has it been successful? It's been surprisingly effective. Really? In fenced areas, we've seen a remarkable resurgence of young aspens. That's great. It clearly indicates that if we reduce the grazing pressure, Pando has the inherent ability to regenerate. That's good to know that such a direct approach can have a positive impact. It is. But fencing can't be the only solution, right? You're absolutely right. Fencing is a crucial first step. Okay. But it's just one tool in the conservation toolbox. Okay. What else is there? Well, remember how we talked about Pando being a fire-adapted species? Yeah. Well, controlled burns are another method being utilized. Wait, wouldn't fire harm Pando? I know. It might sound strange to use fire to protect a forest. Yeah. But it mimics natural processes that aspen rely on. Okay. Low-intensity fires actually clear out competing vegetation. Ah, uh, okay. Allowing sunlight to reach the forest floor. Right. And triggering new aspen growth from the root system. So it's like hitting the reset button on the forest floor. Exactly. Okay, interesting. So it's a way to help Pando regenerate naturally, even if it seems a bit dramatic at first. Yeah, exactly. What about other approaches? Are there any efforts focused on Pando's genetics? Yeah, there's some really fascinating work happening on that front. Oh, okay. Scientists are delving into Pando's DNA. Wow. Searching for clues about its resilience and adaptability. Cool. This research could unlock the secrets of its longevity. I see. And provide insights into how we can help it face future challenges. So it's like learning from a master, decoding the secrets of survival etched into Pando's very being. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. What have they found so far? Well, one interesting finding is that Pando has remarkably low genetic diversity. Okay. Which makes it potentially more vulnerable to disease outbreaks. Uh-oh, if a disease comes along, that can impact one stem. Yeah. It could potentially impact them all. So is there anything that can be done to address that low genetic diversity? That's a question researchers are grappling with right now. Mm. Some suggest introducing genetic material from other Aspen populations. Oh, okay. To bolster Pando's resilience. Yeah, I see. However, that idea is controversial. Yeah, I can see why. Because it involves manipulating the genetic makeup of such a unique and ancient organism. That's a tough call, a delicate balance between potentially helping Pando yeah. and the risks of interfering with nature. Exactly. It speaks to a broader ethical question. How far should we go to protect something like this? It really does. It's a conversation that we need to have. Right. Protecting Pando isn't just about preserving a single organism. Yeah. It's about understanding the delicate balance of entire ecosystems right. and recognizing the ripple effects of human actions. It's a reminder that we're all interconnected just like the trees in Pando's forest. We are. So looking ahead, what does the future hold for Pando? That's the big question. Is there hope? Well, the future of Pando, like so many natural wonders, yeah. rests on the choices that we make today. It does. Will we continue to prioritize short-term gains over long-term sustainability? Mm -hmm. Or will we embrace a more holistic approach that values protecting our planet's biodiversity. I mean, what gives you hope for Pando's future? I have to admit, it's hard to stay optimistic when you hear about all the threats it faces. It is a lot to consider, but you know what gives me hope? What's that? The sheer dedication mm -hmm. of 
the scientists, conservationists, yeah. Yeah. and everyday people right. working tirelessly to protect Panda. Yeah, they're out there doing the work. They are. Yeah. They're monitoring its health, implementing those innovative strategies that we just talked about, right. and raising awareness about its importance. Yeah. It's really inspiring it is. to see people coming together to protect something so unique yeah. and precious. It, it kind of reinforces the idea that even small actions can make a difference, right? Absolutely. It's not just about grand gestures. It's the collective effort of many. Yeah, exactly. Learning about Pando, yeah. sharing its story, and supporting conservation efforts, mm -hmm. no matter how small, all contribute to its future. So if any of our listeners are feeling inspired to learn more about Pando yeah, or get yeah. involved in its conservation, mm -hmm. are there resources they can explore? Absolutely. The Friends of Pando okay. is an organization dedicated to protecting this ancient giant. Great. Their website has a wealth of information, including updates on current research okay. and conservation efforts. Cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. And, you know, for those who want to experience the magic of Pando firsthand, yeah. there are guided tours available during certain times of year. Wow. Seeing it in person is truly awe-inspiring. It's on my bucket list now, for sure. I highly recommend it. You know, as we've been diving deep into this world of Pando, yeah. I can't help but think about all the other hidden wonders out there in nature, things we might just walk right past yeah. without realizing the incredible stories they hold. It's so true. We often get caught up in our own busy lives. We do. And forget to appreciate the sheer diversity and complexity of the natural world. It's true. You know, Pando serves as a powerful reminder that there's so much more to discover if we just open our eyes. And that discovery doesn't have to be, you know, in some far off location. Okay. It could be right in our own backyards, local parks, even the cracks of a sidewalk. Exactly. There's magic to be found everywhere if we just stay curious and observant. Like a colony of ants working together, mm -hmm. a spider web glistening with dew. Yeah, or a tiny wildflower pushing its way through the concrete. Exactly. There are just endless opportunities for wonder and amazement all around us. There really are. And each of those tiny wonders is part of a larger ecosystem, just like Pando is connected to the Fish Lake Basin. It is. It really highlights the interconnectedness of all living things. It's a beautiful web of life, and we're all a part of it. And I think that's one of the most important takeaways from our exploration of Pando. Definitely. It's not just about a single organism. Yeah. It's about understanding our place in the grand scheme of things. And recognizing that impact our choices have. Exactly. On that delicate balance of nature. It is a delicate balance. What we do or don't do can have ripple effects far beyond ourselves. It can. Before we wrap up, yeah. is there anything else you wanted to add? Well, you know, we've talked a lot about the scientific aspects of Pando. We have. But I can't help but wonder about the cultural and spiritual significance of this ancient being. Mm. You know, for thousands of years, yeah. Pando has witnessed the rise and fall of civilizations, the changing seasons, the ebb and flow of life itself. It has. It's like a living time capsule holding within its roots the stories of countless generations. It really is. It's humbling. It is. It makes you want to sit in silence beneath Pando's canopy. Yeah. And just listen to the whispers of the wind, mm -hmm. imagining all the secrets it holds. It's amazing. Perhaps those secrets are meant to be spoken. Right. But felt. Yeah. You know, maybe the true lesson of Pando mm -hmm. is not about scientific data or conservation strategies, yeah. but about the awe and wonder that nature inspires within us. It's a good reminder that sometimes the most important lessons are those that we learn through our hearts. Yes. Not just our minds. Exactly. Well, thank you for joining me on this incredible deep dive into the world of Pando. It's been my pleasure. It's been a journey of discovery, wonder, mm -hmm. and a renewed sense of responsibility for the natural world. I agree. Until next time, keep exploring. Yes. Keep learning. Keep asking questions. And keep those minds curious. Absolutely.